Hi everyone, welcome to drawingtutorialsonline.com, podcast number 17. In this podcast, I'm going to take you to another part of my video tutorial life, which is paintingtutorialsonline.com. I really haven't been promoting that site much at all, uh, at all. I've really just been slowly but surely adding content to the site. And I wanted to share with you uh, one chapter uh, that's about 18 minutes and uh, the whole video tutorial was about three and a half hours and in this uh, video tutorial at paintandtutorialsonline.com I know I feel like I'm having deja vu uh, is um, all about adding a color to your light source a lot of the focus on the site has been about controlling color so far and I just wanted to share something different with you guys. So uh, this is a long video and I'm not gonna talk too much, but I hope you enjoy it and uh, visit the site. I don't have too many sample uh, videos on there, but I'm gonna be adding more as the weeks go on because I do have a lot of content there now. Uh, so enjoy the video uh, podcast. See you soon. Let's get into our last chapter now and uh, it's getting to be the wee hours here of the morning. And so I'm probably gonna stop soon uh, so I can get this thing onto the website for you guys by uh, later this afternoon into tonight, most likely tonight, Thursday night. So I mixed out pure um, yellow, Windsor yellow into pure Windsor red, and uh, I'm just going to apply the color of the light now in a, in a much more intense way uh, than what you see down already here. and. Um, now, being that this is technically teaching you guys how to tint your light source, I figured I'd be really over the top with it and really kind of put it in strong, stronger than what I normally would do on my own paintings. Uh, but I do think that this is another way that you could use color. Again, I'm just here to give you options, and we've spoken about all the different palettes, but this is just a very simple solution to color where you know most of your your paint is going to be done in a monochromatic way if your paint skin tone I mean my skin tone on the right side of the paint is very monochromatic um, and it's all the browns and uh, now what I'm doing here is I'm just in one area making a decision am I gonna paint this thing um, in warm light in cool light and in this spe specific illustration I'm doing it in the warm light uh, because I'm really, I really was struck with the photo when I when I saw it, and then I bought um, the license to use it. And so again, we could be painting this light that we're doing right now in yellow, uh, red, in green. Uh, we can do it in blue. You know, we can do it in violet. We can do it in any color really that we want to. It's just um, making a decision about what's the mood and the emotion of the piece. And uh, you know you can have two different color light sources. I mean, I didn't add the blue down over there. Um, right now, the right side is very monochromatic, but I could also, you know, come on in here and add a secondary light source, which is on the painting. And then, if you choose, I'm just thinking as I paint here. This, uh, if if you choose to um, do that, then you have the added benefit of working with um, color opposites which would really give your piece some punch. Now, you know, again, take into consideration what is your style, who is your audience. If you're doing like country folk art, um, you wouldn't necessarily be doing like slick light like this. If you're doing fantasy book covers, illustration book covers, or a bit more of an edgy type illustration, well then this is appropriate. But you know, know your audience. I wouldn't be doing this type of thing like on kids' books. Um, you know, definitely not. Just I don't think it would look right for that. Uh, so you know, wh who your end game is. This whole technique, color of the light. Um, in this, you know, what what I'm painting here is this uh, very pretty woman, very sexy woman. So obviously, the subject matter is giving it a vibe too. But you know, you could definitely, definitely apply this if you're going with more of a kid-friendly thing. If you wanted to do the picture books, you know, your colors might be tinted light but pastel and then um, you know it could be tinted light but it'd be a pastel blue pastel yellow it doesn't have to be this intense I'm just trying to get this light on the nose you 
Yeah, do you see how that, just those two brush strokes, <clears throat> I put the light on the nose and uh, now it looks as though light is hidden her that is colored and tinted. I still have um, a minimum of two hours of painting, probably even three. So I'm going to save that and I'll photograph it. I won't do it on camera. I guess um, it's just going to take me too long and then the tutorial is going to become about rendering. And we will go there. I know we will. There's no doubt about it. I will shoot a video in the future where I just film the, in, the entire thing. But, you know, there's a lot of video for this step number 19. You know, we're getting, by the time we're done here, I think we're going to be close to uh, three and a half hours. So that, that's, that's a long step. Let me go with some red. And yellow ochre. I am really going thick with the paint versus my background, which is really thin, and that just gives you a very cool texture. Basically, all I'm going to do off camera is adjust my drawing. But the value structure is laid in. Still working with this pure, bright chroma. You just got to get the value of the chroma right. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for that. But do you guys see how that's punched up? And let me do a, just a little bit more where it touches the darker. Obviously, I can blend it all out a little bit more smoothly. Now let me just have fun and, and show you how I would do a little bit with the eye because you guys are probably going to want to see me draw this eye out and unfortunately I'm not going to do most of it on camera but I did block it in for you. So if I want now what I could do is I'm taking my neutral gray I'm going to do my lower eyelid right over there. A little bit more. I'm going cool. This is very cool due to the makeup. And the photographer did all this on purpose. You know, he had the warm light. Like, he, he, he chose the cooler makeup. It didn't all happen by accident. Because it's just a nice opposite color. There's cast shadows in the white of the eye. Uh, if I go pure white with the highlight. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold on. It's got to twirl that brush. Some of the highlights are going to make it look as though the eye is wet. Which just is a very cool thing. Yeah, I, I so want to be centered to this when I'm doing this. Okay, now I'm going to take some paint off this brush. I'm using my neutral string.
and I'm drawing as I'm doing this to make my drawing look correct. Still needs to be cooler. But right now the paint is tacked up really in a good way. So I can do this in a couple of hours while the uh, video is doing its thing. And then I'll be able to get this on the site. Like I said, anything that I feel I'm doing at the end, I'll, maybe I'll come back, maybe I won't, I don't know. Just really want to save the whites till the very, very end. I hope this is helping you guys. I wouldn't mind some feedback. Um, did you like this? Did you not like this? Did you think it was to this or to that? Um, any feedback is helpful. I mean, I always tease my class and I'm like, what do you guys think? Do you want to do this? And then I say to them, I should never ask 20 different people what they think because I know I will get 20 different opinions. And so I, I it's kind of like playing Russian roulette when you ask for 20 different opinions in, in a classroom. But on the website, you know, it's do, do, you know, give me your feedback. Let me know what you thought. I'll do my best to um, meet with some of your suggestions as best as I possibly can. Um, you know, for me, the whole big thing is I'm such on a tight schedule uh, because of school that I have certain days that I do the drawing tutorials and certain days that I do the painting tutorials. And if I miss those days, I'm basically screwed. So my main commitment is uh, not to um, miss those days and to make sure that Every Thursday there's new content on the drawing site and then every Thursday there's new content on the paint in site. So even if it's not a, a complete paint in, I still want to give you content so you guys get new stuff um, for your money and uh, you learn new things even though um, my ego would like to be able to finish the paint in perfectly for you on camera in 10 minutes, but that's just not going to happen. Um, so let me just do a little bit more here. This is where the fun happens. I just absolutely love pain and eyes. I'll work this a little bit more for you guys. So I did lose my drawing. But perhaps we can bring it back. Okay, where are we? I'm getting my skin flesh. Yeah, you really got to twirl this brush. Ah, too warm, too warm. Okay, I got to watch myself. I'm twisting the brush as I load paint on it. Okay, I'm going, getting my skin tone mixed together with the neutrals. I'm trying to do my brush stroke in a rounded way. This has all got to be softer. Taking a number three value, neutral skin tones. Softening out. So this will be the rest of my day. Doing a little bit of painting like this, going to the computer, dealing with video. I'll, and that's good because it gives my eyes a, a chance to rest from the painting. So I don't get that tunnel vision. Okay, I'm going to clean this. I'm going to go back to the intense color. 
a lot of paint on my brush. Clean the brush again. So at this point, I'm not going to use the fan brush anymore because I run the risk of bringing, I really caked the paint on over there. I really do run the risk of bringing that yellow into the rest of the skin tone. There's little blending brushes that I could be using for this, but not right now on video. Um, okay, let's just go on the eyes. So let me show you how I would do a lash, because uh, you guys might be wondering, well, how is he going to do the lashes? Basically, once I get all this in, then I'm just going to kind of come on up and, and pull a lash up like that. Uh, very simple, but you got to get the, 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 sh the integrity of the um, eyeball first before you can go on in there and start messing with the lash. Is. Okay, a couple more minutes here on this. Let's um, keep working with this one eye. See, the lashes are already messing me up, so I'm just going to paint right through them. You got to do that stuff after. Okay, there's another little highlight in that eye. Let's come over here and balance. Too bright. Let's do a little bit of this upper lid. Let's try to fix this on camera. Okay. I think I'm gonna do the rest off camera now. What am I gonna work on? This nose is too skinny. Uh, nose needs to be wider. Nose needs to be, values have them matched. Um, I'm gonna continue to work on the eyes. I'm probably gonna go a little darker with that background. I'm just gonna work the whole thing. And uh, if there's anything that I feel that is important for you guys that, um, but this is pretty much it. I think you got the gist of the tutorial, and the tutorial was about having a definitive color of light, and uh, we've got that, and I think it looks pretty cool, and um, now it's just a matter of you guys kind of giving it a try, and uh, this side is just so much more neutral, and I do appreciate you watching. Again, if you've survived this long, I would love feedback from you, even if it's a sentence or two. Did you like this tutorial? What would you want to see more of and um, stuff like that. I think that would be really helpful for me. So thanks so much for watching again and uh, we'll see you guys in the next step.